Hey guys, RC Peck here. Um, I was having a conversation with a client yesterday and she, she said to me, but we've never had, we, we've never had a situation like this. Like we've never had a virus. It, 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 this one's different. And, and I want to share with you my response because I think it's important. Um, every crash that's ever happened and I'm a hype free zone, but I'm just going to use the word crash because that's what people usually say. And if I say correction, it confuses people. But every time the market has crashed or gone into a situation like it's in with the Corona virus crash, um, it was the first time ever, right? So if someone's trying to scare you or, if, or, 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 or you are scaring yourself by going, oh my God, it's different this time because this one's a virus and we've never had a virus before. And that's going to make things very different. I, I would ask you to just chill out because every market crash was caused by something that had never happened before ever. And it was the first time and the world wasn't prepared for it, which makes sense, right? Because when the world is prepared for something, it, it doesn't affect you. When a human is prepared for something, it doesn't really affect them that badly, right? But it's when something happens that they're, they're not prepared for that, it hurts them. So this one that we're currently in is a virus. Okay. Uh, in 08, it was a global uh, real estate meltdown. Okay. So that was about real estate and the world had not seen that before. In 2000, it was about everyone saying that the market was going to go to the sky. And I'm going from memory here, but the NASDAQ fell 78%. I mean, you can just round that to 80%. Like, oh my God. A lot, right? So the world had never seen such speculation like that on such a grand scale. It absolutely crushed Silicon Valley. Uh, didn't kill them forever, but you know, in 2000, the world had never had anything like that happen before, right? And then before that, no one remembers, but we had long-term capital management in 98. The market fell 25% in 1998, and the world had never seen a hedge fund implode so fast so far. Um, now, no one remembers that because the Fed stepped in and pumped lots of money into the system. But if you go back to 1974, which was a 50% correction, that was a combination of three things. Uh, Nixon taking the US dollar off the gold standard. So prior to that, people could um, hand back their US dollars and they'd get gold. Um, there was huge inflation going on in the beginning part of the 70s, and then there was an oil crisis. So the 73-74 crash, it was officially 49%, was because of oil, and was because of hyperinflation, and was because of the U.S. reneging on their Bretton Woods agreement that they would keep their currency convertible to gold. So there were a few things hitting 74. Now that hasn't happened ever again. Right, the U.S. dollar was a fiat currency from about August 1971 until today. So every time there's a major crash or fall like this, um, it's because something has happened for the first time. But that's true with everything. I actually skipped over 87 um, accidentally. That was a software. That was portfolio insurance software that all the banks and insurance companies had that it, it triggered all at the same time hasn't happened again. So I'm not diminishing this being a virus and how that's going to affect everyone. But what I'm saying is each crash, global crash, is always the world has never seen this. And I just think we need to just relax a little bit on of course this one's a new one, right? Because we figure it out. So the next time when we get through this, whether the market's going to finish down 50, 60%, or if it has already stopped, the next one in five or 10 years or four years or whenever it is, is going to be for something completely different. So I just want you to keep that in mind as you're getting peppered with really, really scary, scary information. Um, so let me do this. Let me just jump behind the computer and just show you one or two examples of how this correction is very similar and how this correction is not similar because every correction has its own, now I'm saying correction and not crash, uh, has its own characteristic. But it's interesting and worthwhile to study 08 and 2000 because they've been this century and they're the most recent. So let me jump behind 
and uh, let's take a look at those. Okay, give me give me a second and we'll do that. All right. Okay, so what we're looking at is the 2000.com crash. And over here on the upper left, we have the peak. Uh, this We're looking at the S&P 500 index. And it was really a triple top, which is interesting. Uh, S&P hit here, tried to get above again, tried to get above again. So we had a triple top in the S&P. So what I want to do is kind of deconstruct the dot-com crash because I think we can learn from it. <clears throat> now, emotionally, it's easy to look at something in hindsight and look at a black squiggly line and be like, yep, got it. But that's a 50% fall, what you're looking at. And the first, the first major fall was down right to April 2001. And it was right here. It was a 26% fall, right? And the stock market had not seen 26% fall for about a decade. Now, notice the rally off it. The market went up 19%. That's a 19% move. I can guarantee you people thought uh, the fall was over on that 19% move. And then the market fell again. And this, um, the bottom of this, this 26, 27% fall right here, this is September 11th right there. But that's a 26.5% fall down to September 11th. Now, what I want to point out is the rally. And uh, again, this is happens to be 21%, but you know, here's another 20 plus percent rally or another 20% plus or minus rally here. This was the first one here. And that was actually a triple top here. And then the market moved down in a huge way right there, falling 32%. But look at this rally right here. So this rally, again, 20% plus or minus, it's actually 20 and a half, 20 and a half percent. And then we had another market fall of 20%. We had another market rally of 20%. We had another market fall. Now we know only in hindsight, that was the last one, right? From there to there, that 15% fall. But we still didn't know this was done. Um, now we see this triple bottom here, but we only know it's a triple bottom in hindsight. But it's not really until the market breaks above this, right? It has to break above past resistance and it finally really confirms it in kind of the July, August, September of 2003 with this beautiful, this is called a flag here. And then it takes off until October 2007. So this is the dot com. What I wanted you to take away from this is there was one, two, three, four. There were four 20 percent rallies before this one fell. Now, every crash is different. Every bear market is different, but we can only learn from the ones that we've already had. And we already had this one and we had four 20%, uh, let's call them rallies within a 30 month, 50% fall. Okay. So now what I want to do is go to 2008. So here's 2008. Um, Maybe there was a double top. You could say there was a double top here, but the market peaked out in October of 07. Now, it slowly fell. This was, let's see what this fall is from there to there. That fall was 19%. So again, we're getting close to that 20% plus or minus 1%. And then the market corrected back up. We didn't get the full 20% the full down until here. Now, this is Lehman Brothers right here collapsing. So this collapse was, basically this collapse from here to here is the coronavirus collapse. Now they look a little different, but basically Lehman Brothers and Corona both fell 35%, 34%, okay? And in a very similar amount of time. So the Corona crash was 30 days. This looks to be about 45, I'm saying calendar days, not trading days. So that's this. What's interesting about 08 is the market was already down about 25% before Lehman happened. But look what happened after Lehman. So I'm gonna, these, these corrections are not that much. Those are 12%, I mean relative. But after Lehman, there is a 24, this is a 24% correction. So what's interesting about this is compared to 2000, you only had one of those big corrections where 2000 had, I'm um, going from what, four 20% uh, rallies. 
08 only had one, and it was a 24% rally. But of course, after the rally faded, the market fell another 20, 27, 28%. So I sometimes think the steeper it is, the less it has to go. Um, but again, 08, this is the corona correction right here. For 08, the Lehman came middle, middle near or middle past, right? It didn't happen at the beginning where the Corona one, the one we're in right now, this happened right at the beginning. So it's going to be interesting to see if the $2 trillion fiscal package um, is, is going to be enough because during this period, before we ever got down here, guys, the Fed dropped rates to zero. The Fed was um, saying they're going to print trillions and there was fiscal policy coming out. Now, it was nowhere near the $2 trillion. It was probably a third of that. So maybe they learned and said, look, let's let's get in front of this. So that's, that's where every crash is different, right? And that's where every crash is also the same. We have rallies. We've always had rallies. And I wanted to show you guys the first two um, crashes of this century because they're also the, the nearest ones. Now, guys, it's not enough to, I mean, this could be entertaining, it could be fun. What's most important is being who you're supposed to be when you're supposed to be it, right? It's more than symbols, it goes beyond symbols. And so if you're finding yourself saying, look, I know I can be better, I wanna be better, then I want you to think about how specifically you can do that because I'm saying that because if you wanna be better, whether you're a momentum trader and you like to be in positions for three months or three weeks, or three years, or you're more of a long-term marathon, I just wanna make sure I'm not hurt, I wanna know when to step out, I know when, I wanna know when to step in. Look, RC, I wanna know where the strength is in the market and that's where I want my money to be. Um, and if you find yourself that, then the next step is usually the easiest and that's to check out my training. Because that's what I do, I train people to make sure their money is in the strongest sectors, the strongest parts of the market. And I'll make sure I put a link um, on the YouTube channel. So uh, thanks guys, I'm getting this up and going. I appreciate you in my world. If you have comments, go ahead and put them below so I can read them. I know I've asked you to email them, but um, I think it's easier just to put the comments below and I will read those. I have zero interest in any ragers or um, people who can't control their feelings and they wanna dump it on others, you can leave. Uh, I'm looking for constructive, um, hey, what do you think? Um, what are you noticing? What are you noticing that I'm not noticing? Uh, if you have a question about something else, put that below. Uh, but I have zero interest in anyone wanting to dump their rage or hatred in this channel. So go ahead and do that, guys. And of course, subscribe. Um, thank you for being in my world. All right, guys, take care.